everybody, Dave Thomas here again, and in this video I am building the Lock Precision Lock 4 high power model rocket. Now I'm not quite sure why they call this the Lock 4 because it has 3 inch fins. Uh, it might be the fourth one they came up with, or it could be because it uses a 4 inch body tube. I don't know, but it's a pretty cool looking rocket. And in my opinion, this is a great rocket for doing your level one certification with. Um, it's big enough that you'll be able to see it fly relatively slowly. It's not going to go way up high, although it can. Uh, but it's going to give you a, a flight that you'll be able to watch instead of just have the rocket disappear on a, on a high power motor. And it shouldn't fly so high that you have a hard time recovering it. And so uh, what they show here is with an H123 motor, it has an expected altitude of about 2,000 feet. And this is still low enough that if you wanted to fly this without any type of uh, dual recovery system, it's not going to go floating off into the next county. And I am of the opinion that your certification flight should be as simple as possible. And this is a good one for it. Now, if you are looking for something a bit more advanced, this rocket can also be set up for dual deployment, either with a chute release or with true dual deployment with um, two different parachutes. And we'll go over the options for that as we get into the kit build. The instructions that come with this kit are pretty basic and assume that you've had experience building other model rockets before. Now, that being said, there really isn't too much more beyond your fairly advanced, say, mid-power rocket that you won't see in here. It's just that everything is bigger. Now, let's check our parts. This kit comes in what's basically just a big plastic bag, and everything is pretty much packed into the, the uh, body tubes. So we have the, the main booster body tube here that's slotted for fins. And inside of it, is a coupler. All right. There's also an upper body tube, and this is what will become the payload bay. And that payload bay can either be used strictly as a payload bay, so if you want to fly, you know, a, an egg or half a dozen eggs um, or something else up there, you can. This can also be modified to uh, house an actual uh, dual deployment parachute system, in which case this would hold one of your two parachutes. We have a large plastic nose cone. Okay, this is the motor mount, and you can see here um, they pack stuff in here as well. So shake this out, and this is the parachute. It is 36 inches in diameter. I'm just going to leave it packed for now. All right, uses 38 millimeter motors. And we've got a couple of sub packages here. Uh, this is the bulk plate for the payload section. And these are the centering rings for the motor mount. This also includes a um, screw eye here that will attach to the shock cord. And this is really kind of neat. This little hook like thing here, this is the engine retainer. And though it looks relatively simple, uh, it's pretty effective and does not cost a lot. And so that's one of the things that we often see with high power kits is the kit does not come with a motor retainer. You have to buy that separately. And high power motor retainers can easily run $30 or more. And so I, I really like seeing this uh, in this kit. Then we have a shock cord and rail buttons. And so the uh, um, kit here says it has a launch lug. It looks like Locke has replaced those with rail buttons. Right, 
we have the fin set. There's a, a total of three eighth inch plywood fins there. Uh, then we have the main decal, and then a smaller kind of generic lock precision decal. Okay, and that looks like everything that is supposed to be here is here. So I'm going to clear this away, and we will get to work. Now before I start in on the engine mount assembly, which is the first step in the instructions, I'm going to treat my fins with some diluted wood filler here to help fill in the grain. Now you don't have to do this. Um, you could just sand the fins and then when the rocket's assembled, put primer on it and it may require a couple of coats to get a nice smooth finish. Um, by doing this, I will get a nicer smooth finish before I do any sanding or uh, primer on that. And this will just help fill in some of the deeper grain here. So what I'm going to do is take a blob of this. And it doesn't matter whether you use an English blob or a metric blob, either one will work. And now I'm just going to add about uh, an equal amount of water. I'm going to start with about 50% and then work my way up if it needs to be a little more liquidy. Okay, and now I'm just going to mix this around. And there are several brands of this. Uh, they all, they're all pretty much the same. They're, they're water-based, they're non-toxic. And you can find them in most home and hardware stores. Now since these fins are plywood, I'm not too worried about them warping. When you do this with balsa fins, it can cause some warping if you don't do it evenly. Okay, here I'm just going to take a paintbrush and just put this in. And you can go ahead and just keep crossing directions. Um, we're not trying to make a smooth finish yet. We're trying to fill in the wood grain. Um, I am going to avoid getting down in here below um, where the surface would be. So this would be the, the fin tab here that goes down into the body tube. I don't need it to be smooth. In fact, I'd, rec I'd rather have it a bit rough so that the adhesives work better when we go to put the, glue, the fins in. Okay. We'll also be rounding off the edges of the fins, so I don't need to worry about putting this on the fin edges. Right. And here I'm going to go ahead, just so I don't make myself mess up here. And I'm just going to draw a line here where the fin tab goes in and stay above that. Um, in fact, I'm not going to go to the line. I'm going to stay a little bit above it because we're going to have um, fin fillets that will go right above that as well. And I want those to adhere better.
Okay, so that's again, I'm not worried about the edges because we're going to round those off anyway. Okay, so I'm going to stand this up and let it dry. And when I come back, I'll have the other two fins done as well. I've let the filler dry overnight. Uh, it doesn't necessarily take that long. And so this is what it looks like when we get it out. It's very bumpy and such, but it's very easy to sand down. So I'm just going to use some 120 grit sandpaper here. Okay, and that's already got most of it down. Uh, basically I'm going to sand back down to the wood grain and what's going to be left behind should be filling in most of the little pores and valleys within the grain. So that's about all there is to it. And then if you want to uh, do it at this point, we can also round off the edges here for the leading edge and for the trailing edge, as is recommended in the instructions. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of these off camera. So filling the fins was a step that we could do ahead of time, and then the fins could be drying while we did some of the next steps. In my case, I let them dry overnight, but if you're in more of a hurry, um, you could have done the fins, put the filler on those, and then do this next step, which is actually this first step in the instructions. So we need one of the uh, centering rings here with a hole in it. There are two of them. We'll use the other one later. And within the uh, package of small parts that goes along with the centering rings are these three pieces. So we've got this T-nut with teeth on it here. And then this is the actual Z motor retainer. And then we just got a little Phillips head screw here. So this is going to go into the hole. And you can either take a hammer or a strong pair of pliers, um, or if you just have really strong thumbs, and we're going to push that all the way in so the teeth are fully engaged in the wood. Now I'm going to have to do this off camera because I don't have a good surface here to hammer this in. So I will come back with this placed inside where it belongs. So I just used a hammer and with a, a couple of taps was able to drive this in. And so now this is the aft end. So the T-nut will face inside the rocket. And then this works by simply putting the Z bracket on there and then putting in the screw. Okay, and then the Z bracket here holds the motor in by overlapping the edge of the motor itself. Actually quite an ingenious little uh, and yet simple device. Okay, now the instructions say to put epoxy on this to make sure it doesn't come off, which I will do, but I'm going to wait on doing that until I assemble the motor mount. That's the way I have to make one less batch of epoxy. And for the moment, I'm going to go ahead and take that off. Now at this point, I want to dry fit everything together. So this is the middle centering ring. I'm going to put it on first. And this is why I wanted to do this. Okay, that's really tight. That is as well. Yep, okay. So all these are going to require a little bit of sanding. I'm also going to lightly sand pretty much the entire tube. Um, the through the wall fins here will actually attach to the motor mount tube and so we want to have this roughed up so that the epoxy has a better surface to grip to. 
but since we won't be able to see exactly where these are going to come down, it's just best to, to lightly sand the entire tube to get that glossy surface off. I sanded out the insides of my centering rings here and basically I just had to remove the layer of uh, partially carbonized wood there from the laser cutter and I ended up using a, a um, sanding drum on a rotary tool to do this. Just do it on low speed so you don't take off too much at once. Uh, if you need to do it by hand, just some coarse sandpaper, run it around the inside a little bit. But now, all of these fit onto my tube here. Okay. And so the next thing I'm going to do is add the hardware to this ring. And this simply consists of the eye bolt here two nuts and two washers, and we're just going to sandwich the um, ring here between the two of them. So I'll put on a nut um, and put that on pretty close to the end of the threads. I'm going to leave just a little bit of thread there. And then a washer, and that's going to pass through the hole here. And then my other nut Goes like that. Okay, this is. So I'm gonna go ahead and extend this nut up as far as it'll go. Okay, and then tighten it down there. So that's just putting it in place, making sure everything fits. Now I'm going to epoxy this, and I'm gonna epoxy it while it's loose. So that way I can put some epoxy on the the bolt itself. Um, pass it through have some epoxy in the hole here. Uh, basically epoxy the whole assembly so that nothing comes loose. And then while I've got epoxy made up for that, I will also do the epoxy on my other ring for the engine retainer there. Alright, so I've got a little bit of five minute epoxy here. I just need to mix it up. Uh, I'm using JB Weld brand. Um, there are lots of brands out there, any of them are fine. If you don't have 5 minute epoxy, um, 15 minutes is fine too. 30 minute it will work as well, but it may tend to run a lot more. I'm using 5 minutes so I can have this handleable fairly quickly. And it doesn't really matter if you have the clear epoxy or the black kind or the brown kind. As long as it's a good epoxy, that's fine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and very quickly do my T-nut here. I'm just going to work in a little bit of epoxy all around the edges. All right, but I don't want any... Oops, almost got there. I don't want any on the threads. Okay, and then I can just let that harden. Okay, so for this part, I want to epoxy anything that can potentially move. So I'm going to put a little bit here on the threads at the top of the eye bolt. And then move my nut all the way up. Okay, and now I'll put a little bit more on here where the nut and the washer will come together. Okay, and then 
then and put some here around the hole and in the hole and then around on this side as well Okay, and that's poked through there. So now I'm just going to put my washer on top of that. Okay, and I crank that down. Um, I really should be wearing gloves here. I'm being a little bit sloppy. Uh, but epoxy can cause allergic reactions in some people. Right, if you do get it on yourself, Use a little rubbing alcohol and it will wipe right off as long as it hasn't hardened yet. All right, and now I'm just going to take a wrench here and tighten this nut. And I want to keep the eye bolt here kind of parallel with the, the edge. Okay, that's good there. So now I'm going to let that harden as well. Now at this point I have dry fitted all of the centering rings onto the motor mount tube. No glue yet. And so the forward one should be right here almost to the edge of the motor mount tube. That gives us just enough room there to put in a fillet. And then initially the instructions say to put the middle ring at about five and a half inches from the uh, aft end and then to put the aft ring here at about an eighth of an inch from that end so about like that and then we need to see how the fins are going to fit here all right so when the fins go through the wall they're going to come in like this, and we want to have them in contact with the centering rings. So I'm moving my middle ring there. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and mark that. Right here. So that I know where that ring has to go. Okay, and I'm going to check this again. Okay, so once more that way. And then I can move these a little bit one way or another. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and dry fit this into the tube. Because we also may find that we need some sanding here. Yep, we're going to need a little bit of sanding. So I'm going to go ahead and let my epoxy finish curing on the hardware here so I don't run into a problem with that. And then uh, I'm going to go back with my uh, Dremel, my rotary tool, and just sand lightly around these rings until everything fits inside. But what I'm going for here is we need to have the space so that this space here corresponds with the slots for the fins so that the fins will go in through here All right, and so they stick out and then the motor mount is going to be inside at about like that now, one other thing you might want to do, if you have a motor casing available, um, when we're doing these fits, go ahead and stick your motor casing in and put on the Z-clip that's going to hold it there so that we make sure that wherever this aft ring gets placed that we have enough clearance for the motor mount retainer to work correctly. So to illustrate this, I've got a 38 
millimeter um, three grain Cesaroni case here. Now in the Cesaroni motors their 38 millimeter cases do not come with an aft closure. It's actually built in to the nozzle assembly that comes with the reload. And so I, over the past several launches, I've just retained a couple of these used ones uh, for the purpose of spacing here. So I just put that on. So that's what it would look like loaded. And right now I've got this set at the eighth of an inch it's recommended. So that would go in there. The clip would simply go into place this way. And I'll just screw that down. Okay, and so uh, it's a little bit thick, but it should work just fine. I don't want to go up too much. See if I go up and get it just complete, almost completely flush there. And I screw that down. Right, that'll just do it there. Okay. So if you don't have a, a motor with which to check your spacing. Go with the measurements in the instructions, they'll work fine. I've sanded the outer parts of my rings now, and before I test fit them again, um, one of the things that can happen is the you get a little bit of a lip that forms here on the inside of the tube, where the, the cardboard gets squished in a little bit. And so if you chamfer that outward, either with a thumbnail like that, um, or you can use a, a metal handle like this, uh, you just angle that outward instead of inward. Okay, and so now we can put this in, check for fit, and it won't get hung up there. Right, so that one goes in nicely. And I've lost my place on that, but that's okay. So right now I'm just checking. So that one goes in. That's trying to move on me as well. That's okay. Just want to make sure that all of the rings go in. So we want them to go in snugly and not dangle around in there. And something else you can do in here, in the instructions it, it has this as one of the finishing steps. Uh, but you can just put in a little bit of thin cyanoacrylate glue or super glue around the edge here, let it soak in, and then wipe it off. And after it dries, if you need to, you can sand it a little bit, but it helps prevent this um, lip formation by the cardboard here so that you don't get that garbage in there. Okay, that's up to you, uh, but especially if you, got, if you have a tube that keeps trying to fold in like that, that's one way to get rid of the problem. I'm ready to put on the forward centering ring now. And for this I'm going to use a 15 minute epoxy just to give me a little bit longer working time. Uh, in general as you go up in, in uh, setting times you also go up in strength. And so I want a, a stronger bond here. Uh, but to be honest, uh, if all you have is 5 minute epoxy just put on a good heavy layer and it's going to be fine. Um, I've built complete models using only 5 minute epoxy. I've built complete models using only 30 minute epoxy. Um, just be aware that if, if you need some extra strength, put a little extra on there. And actually, the, I'm gonna, as we go through here, I'm going to show some ways that I tend to overbuild anyway uh, beyond that which is in the instructions. So this is, I, I tend to get the, the motor mounts especially very strong. Okay, so here I'm just going to take this, and again, uh, I want to get my eighth of an inch or so here. Um, and if you want to give a little bit more, so that's getting almost to a quarter inch there, that's fine. Um, you know, you could stick this down an inch and it really wouldn't hurt anything. Might get a little bit more charring of your... Um, shock cord. Alright, so I'm just going to lay this down all the way around here.
Okay, and now I'm going to move it forward and just push that epoxy up ahead and giving it just a little bit of a twist as I go. And this just helps get epoxy into everywhere. And that now has formed a really nice fillet without me having to do anything else. And here I just need to make sure that I get this even all the way around. And if, if you got a little bit of an angle on that, it'll still fit. Don't worry about it. Okay. And now, once that's there, um, I'm just going to fill in the, the back side here. Okay, and this doesn't have to look pretty, so if you want to leave it just as it is right now, that's fine. Um, what I'm going to do here is actually form a fillet in it. If for nothing else, it's good practice for when we do the fins. And this is a, a little trick I picked up from another online video. And here I'm just going to take a little bit of rubbing alcohol on my glove. And I'll pull my glove tight so my finger is relatively smooth. And then using the, the alcohol, it keeps the epoxy from sticking to my glove. And so this allows me to make a really nice smooth fillet here. Now, I had to bump up there in the, where I had the nut. Um, but we'll use the same technique when we do the fins. And so a little bit of practice here where you can't see anything is a good idea. And then a little bit of excess here, I'm just going to stick over my eye bolt assembly. And now I'm just going to let this harden for a while before we go on to the next ring. While I'm waiting for the centering rings to finish curing, we can look ahead here to the payload bay and how we want to set this up. And this is something I mentioned earlier in the video, so that depending on how you want to build this rocket, um, you can do this in one of three ways. So you could eliminate the payload bay completely and just glue the coupler in halfway up and then glue this to the main body tube and then everything would hook in to the nose cone much like it would be on a smaller model rocket. The way the instructions are written, this bulk plate goes into one end of the coupler and this is going to require a little bit of sanding. Uh, but basically this goes until it's just right inside there like that. Uh, and then we'd have an eye bolt here and then the coupler gets glued into the tube on this end. And so with the bulk plate in there you have quite a bit of room inside. And the third option is to either build or buy a uh, avionics bay kit and that would fit inside this coupler and it would come with its own bulkheads and everything so you wouldn't need this and so you'd have this in here you would not have as much space anymore because there would be a bulk plate here right, which fills up um, a goodly portion of the payload bay, and then you'd also have the nose cone. All right, if we put the nose cone alongside this, okay, so if we had the nose cone there and the payload bay there, basically there is only so we can get there. Okay. So if we've got the nose cone in place and its shoulder comes down to that far and the coupler is in place, there's not a whole lot of room there. There's just enough room for a parachute, which would be what you'd be using it for if you set this up for dual deployment. So I want to give myself the maximum versatility here. 
So I'm going to go ahead for now and I will install the bulkhead plate here. But instead of gluing this in, I'm going to use some reusable plastic rivets. And so those will go in at, at four equidistant points around here and will hold this in, but give me the option of removing them again in case I want to put an avionics bay in here. Um, the two avionics bays I'm familiar with, uh, one's made by Locke, the other one's made by Apogee, they come with their own coupler. And so if I decide that it's time for the avionics bay, I can just remove those rivets, pull this out with its um, hardware attached, set it aside, install the avionics bay into here, and then set this up for dual deployment. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to have to do uh, before we do anything else here is I need to sand off the edge here so that it will fit inside here properly. So I used my rotary tool and sanded the circumference here. I also put a slight bevel on the edge just to make it go in easier. And so now if we test fit this, it goes in very nicely. All right, and when we glue this, it'll go on with just a little bit of an indentation all the way around. And that will give us room for uh, a nice fillet in there. But before that, we need to install our hardware. And this is going to get go together a lot like what we saw with the um, eye bolts going on the centering rings. And so once again, we're simply going to put this together. And I'm just going to dry fit this quickly. Okay, the one difference is it's got bigger fender washers here than the, the one on the centering ring. It's a little bit longer. There we go. Okay, so that'll all go together like that. And then this will fit in here. Like this. And I want to put this all together at the same time, so I'm going to get enough epoxy ready to do both the eye bolt and then the uh, inside here. This time I've made up a batch of 15 minute epoxy, uh, mainly here to give me some extra working time since I'm doing two pieces with this. And just like we did before, I'm going to start by just putting a little bit of epoxy on the threads here and then moving that nut up. That will give us a good lock there. Okay, and I'll put a little bit more here on the underside of the nut. Okay, and then my fender washer. And then some more. Put this on the underside of the fender washer where it's going to come into contact with the bulkhead. And that'll go in here. Okay, and then we're going to put on some more. It's actually more than I need right there. Okay, another fender washer. I'm going to move that around just so it gets all gluey. And then finally we'll put on the nut. Like that. And here it doesn't matter what position the uh, eye bolt itself is in. Take a wrench here and just tighten that down. Right, just, there's a, a blob here right on the end of the bolt. I'm just going to spread it around onto the nut itself. All right, and this little drip that got out here is nothing to worry about. 
I'm just going to wipe it off so I don't get epoxy on somewhere that I don't want it. Okay, now I'm going to do this in two spots here. So I'm going to put a bead of epoxy um, first right around here with the understanding that it's going to get pushed forward. So I'm doing this just inside the edge. And it doesn't need to be very thick. If you wanted, to, you could actually even use um, wood glue. I wouldn't use white glue for this, but wood carpenter's wood glue. Um, since this is between cardboard and plywood, and it's not going to get particularly hot, and it's not going to have a lot of force on it. Um, if you wanted to use wood glue here, that worked just fine. All right, so now I'm going to put this in. Push downward here till I get just that lip on the inside. Okay, so I've got just it's inset within the couple a little bit. We look inside there, see so we get enough light in. Okay, that has pushed up the um, epoxy ahead of it, forming a little fillet there. And now what I'm going to do is using my re remaining epoxy, I will fill in this and try and keep it down off that edge. We want it just inside. Just running out of epoxy here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make up some more. And what I'll do is make up enough to completely cover the wood here. And that's just to give it a little bit more resilience since this will be taking the brunt of the ejection charge when it goes off. So here I've added some 30 minute epoxy across the surface and then move that into the, the joints around the edge as well. And the main reason for the, the 30 minute of epoxy is that it will remain fluid enough to uh, give a uniform surface here. So it will flow outward, fill in the low spots, um, and things like that, that the, uh, the shorter epoxies just won't do. So once again, we can hurry up and wait some more. Uh, I'll put this aside, and we'll move on to the next step. Another step we can do while we're waiting for epoxy to cure is to mark the body tube for where the uh, rail buttons are go going to go. Now in the instructions it still shows this being for a launch lug and it won't be, it'll be for a rail button. Okay, so I'm just going to take a tape measure here and the idea is just to find a midpoint so this is right about 10 centimeters between um, fin slots here, so I'm just going to make a mark there. And then you can put this on a door frame. Now door frames aren't very portable, and this is a fairly wide body tube, and so door frames often aren't deep enough anyway. So the other thing you can do is get yourself a piece of angle aluminum like this. And that will just set against the body tube here. And you can check and make sure of your straightness by looking at 
the uh, fin slots. Now I can just hold this against the body tube and draw a line all the way down. Like that. Now since this kit uses rail buttons, we won't be able to place those exactly until we get the motor mount in. Most likely, one is going to go right here at the base of the rocket, and then the other one will go about halfway between where the uh, motor mount ends and where the coupler comes in, which would be somewhere in here. Um, ideally, you want this to be right around the center of gravity.